After a wow. brief hiatus, the United States is green lighting the fight against ISIS, this time taking a more robust approach. Combined Joint Task Force Operation Inherent Resolve reports that a clearance mission Friday led to multiple ISIS casualties, captured more than a dozen ISIS fighters, and recovered a significant amount of small arms, homemade explosives, and ammunition. Now, back in October, the Trump administration announced that U.S. troops would withdraw from northern Syria, but since that announcement, the administration has shuffled through several plans regarding the positioning of U.S. troops in Syria, with military leaders reporting about 600 U.S. troops will remain in Syria to combat ISIS and to keep oil fields from falling into ISIS hands. Just last week, however, the Pentagon Inspector General warned that ISIS is expected to revamp its operations in Syria, all because of the drawdown of U.S. troops, that of which ISIS might likely exploit. So joining me now to talk more about this, former Pentagon official Michael Malouf. Michael, thanks so much for joining us. Okay, Pleasure. so first we're leaving Syria, then we're staying in Syria, and now we're going to ramp up the attacks. What is going on, and what should we be doing? Well, we, we did a, uh, even though the president has flip-flopped, uh, there's been a consistent effort to keep, to move U.S. troops out of the north, away from the Syrian border where the Kurds are, and bring the Kurds down. Actually, where, where the attack occurred with ISIS uh, it was actually in the eastern part, around the uh, oil well areas, near the oil well areas. So consequently, and, and it was with, with the Kurds, so, and they're further south. So that, that makes it uh, consistent, and, and we have 600 uh, troops working with the Kurds there, but we're also, we also brought in a bunch of, uh, of forces coming in from Iraq, so, because it's right near the, the Iraqi border. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it, we moved them out of one, uh, uh, an area closer to the, to the Turkish border, mm -hmm. moved them further south. That's all it was. What, is there a better alternative here to this? I mean, is this? Get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, besides that, but I mean, you know, like again, with this, all this flip-flopping, I mean, why the flip-flop? Is it that, you know, we're not getting the well, right information? I mean, what's going on? I wouldn't characterize it so much as a flip-flop. It's just a, 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 re, a reconnoitering of your, of your forces mm -hmm. away from the border, which was an, an, an antagonism for Erdogan, the president of Turkey, and with, it, with the Kurds. So he, he apparently bought into the notion that we can continue working with the Kurds to go after ISIS, but further south, away from the safe zone. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what's happened. And we're keeping some 600 uh, 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 special forces operators uh, in, in the, in the uh, working with the, with, with the Kurds. They're closer to uh, uh, Dar es Zor, basically. Mm -hmm. That's where the uh, oil wells are. Now, switching gears, in Turkey, mm -hmm. we have the Turkish F-16 warplanes. They flew over Ankara Monday, again today, to test out its new Russian S-400 missile defenses, despite pressure from the U.S. to actually drop this system altogether. U.S. says the system isn't compatible with NATO defenses. Is it? Why is this a threat to the U.S. if, if you know, Turkey's helping us combat ISIS? What's, what's going on with this situation? Well, the United States does not want uh, uh, weapon systems outside of the NATO structure to be used because of the uh, F-35 and, and the other uh, Air Force, U.S. Air Force jets, which talk to one another. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the question is, in the testing, were there Russian technicians involved and that that's un unknown as yet but what's what we're seeing here is that Trump has not implemented uh, the sanctions that he's supposed that he's authorized to do uh, he's obviously uh, exercising a, a kind of waiver if you will mm -hmm. because he has a personal relationship with Erdogan and Erdogan for his part is playing off the United knowing this plays is playing off the United States against Putin and vice versa mm -hmm. so but what is but what is Turkey angling for he he knows that he can't go too far with Trump because Trump has threatened to destroy the economy and mm -hmm. and Erdogan was voted in uh, to office at, from prime minister to president on on the promise that he would reform the economy and that's not happening mm -hmm. and uh, con so he's 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 really walking a tightrope on this and he's pushing that S4 400 envelope about as far as it's going to go, and I wouldn't doubt that Congress will uh, uh, intervene and, and put mandatory sanctions on uh, Turkey at some point if this continues. I was going to say, yeah, piggybacking off of that, as reported by Bloomberg today, the mm -hmm. U.S. Senate, they're pressing ahead with their work on drafting those sanctions yeah. against Turkey, like you mentioned. However, Erdogan said today that he had the approval of President Trump for a study aimed at rendering the deployment of this S-400 missile defense system. So what gives here? Will there be a continued dispute well, between the executive and legislative with the NATO ally? <laughs> oh, I, I'm absolutely certain of it. I'm confident of it. You see, 
Trump, Trump uh, has this personal relationship with Erdogan, as I said, mm -hmm. and, and he has other things going on through the uh, sons-in-laws uh, on business uh, activities that, that are uh, off on the side here, mm -hmm. which we don't talk about. Mm -hmm. but, uh, he's, he's, uh, but uh, he also realizes that if he, swing, if he imposes those sanctions on Turkey, Turkey will swing eastward for mm -hmm. sure. And and that'll be a whole new ball game. Right now, Erdogan is sort of playing a, playing us both off, but mm -hmm. he could easily swing eastward, and that's what that's the concern, and and we're seeing that uh, increasingly, frankly, mm -hmm. because Erdogan is looking at um, other weapon systems from Russia, and the, the sanctions that the U.S. would impose is any any country that purchases uh, Russian weapon systems automatically come under sanctions. Mm -hmm. And uh, and at the same time, Turkey is pivotal. It's yep. it's a member of NATO. It's got the second largest uh, military in NATO, in that in in all of NATO. And uh, consequently, uh, it, it's it's really a touch, uh, a very touchy feely uh, situation. But you got members of Congress that are pushing that envelope, and they want to impose these sanctions on Turkey. And if depending upon the votes, mm -hmm. and if they're mandatory and not just a uh, uh, a, a, a non-binding resolution, uh, the president may not have enough votes to override. Yeah. And so then the question is, he, he, automatically those sanctions would go into effect, and then we're going to see a whole new level of activity between the United States and Turkey, which will not bode well for our interests in the long term. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, former Pentagon official Michael Maloof, thanks so much for Pleasure. joining us. We appreciate your expertise. Thank you. Thanks. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.